In today's video, we're going to get started on one of the last big jobs left to get this van build done. We're going to dive into exactly how we managed to build this bench seat with a lot of functionality. If this is your first time to the channel, then welcome. For the last year, me and my wife Rosie have been building this panel van into our very own tiny home on wheels that we can take around Europe in just a couple of weeks. So without further ado, let's get into the video. Before we can get started with building this bench seat, it's time to finally finish our bed by adding a little bit of trim. I just cut our piece down to size, made sure it all fit before countersinking some holes, getting out the trusty bry wax, giving it a good coat, leaving that to dry, buffing off the excess, and then finally fixing it in place. And we are so happy with the final result. Now let's get started building this bench seat. The plan for our seating area was to build everything around our toilet and our fridge. Once the overall layout was in place, I just went about attaching the start of our frame to our wheel latch boxes. I then went about constructing the main part of the frame using L brackets and wood screws. Now that our floor battens are in place and attached to our subfloor, I could finally get started with the rest of the frame. Okay, welcome back to another day on the van build and in particular on building this bench seat. So you would have seen up until now that I've been building the main carcass of the bench seat and then also working at doing the first bits of framing for my fridge and for my toilet. So now I've just got to frame the fridge. I've got to build up on all the four sides and then put some cross members in just so it's really strong. This takes my weight already so I'm really happy about that but I'm going to be adding some extra support on the corners just to make it really really strong and then I'll be building up where the toilet is now that the frame's done let's get on with some ply lining Good morning. The sofa's in, uh, well, the frame of the, the sofa's in, and it's painted and it's starting to look really, really good. That's what it looks like at the moment. I've just taken the tops off because I will uh, paint those eventually at some point. It's just, I really needed to get the majority of the painting done because this weekend's job is fitting our vinyl floor in. This is a job I've been really excited to do because if truth be told, I'm sick of looking at this plywood flooring. So, I took to Facebook Marketplace and what I found was a local carpet fitters in my area which just had a load of vinyl offcuts sitting in a warehouse and they were all priced to sell. I found this one and this was only £30. So, that's essentially my job for this weekend is to get this vinyl floor fitted and I've got no idea how hard it's going to be. I'm going to put it down with spray glue. I'll pick you up if I've got anything useful to say but if I don't and I'm pulling my hair out I guess here's me fitting our vinyl flooring. Right, it's been a few hours since I last picked you up. I haven't filmed anything because, quite frankly, cutting that floor into size stressed me out. <laughs> There's so many shapes I had to cut around and so many bits of wood I had to factor in that I just got on with it. But it's all cut to size now. I've just got to glue it down. So I'm just going to show you what it looks like now and not bore you with footage of me gluing the floor down, really. It's pretty self-explanatory. I'm just going to be using contact adhesive on the floor and on my plywood just to make sure that it all sticks well. Don't 
Well, good morning and welcome back to another day working on this sofa. It's been quite a while since I picked you up last, but I've made quite a bit of progress off camera. We're moving on to doing all the soft furnishings today, so actually making our sofa cushions. And you can see behind me, it's already started, so I'll show you all that. But first of all, let's show you what this frame's looking like. Everything's been painted. I've made holes for where the, the hinged doors are. So now we've basically got a fully functioning bench seat. On this side, this is where the toilet is gonna sit and the door swings open to allow for the toilet to be pulled out when we need to use it. The drop down for the table to sit into works really well. And also the fridge is now on a hinge. The next thing to do was figure out what we're gonna use for cushions. Now, I know you can get companies to make custom covers and cushions, but I priced that up and it was looking to go into the hundreds of pounds. And I didn't want to spend that, especially right at the very end of the build. And with us planning to go to Europe, we really need to be saving every penny we can in order to make that trip happen. We had a six inch memory foam topper, which we used to have on our old bed. So what we decided to do is cut that down. Okay, so what you can see behind me are basically the starting of our sofa cushions. They look a bit rough and ready at the moment. I mean, I literally just went at it with a marker pen and a Stanley blade. But uh, yeah, overall, they, they look all right. My plan for these is I'm going to use some uh, one inch thick high density foam, which was relatively cheap to be fair. So I'm going to use that, spray glue it to the bottom of these. I've ordered some stretch covers off Sheen, two sets, so two different colours, uh, so I can just literally stretch those on, and then if the dog gets them dirty or they just need a wash, I can just take those off, stick them in the wash, and then just throw another set on, pretty much just like changing a bed. So I'm going to set you up on a time lapse, and I'm going to cut the one inch foam and spray glue it to our sofa cushions. Well, there you have it. That was a nice easy job and I got it done within about 20 minutes. Now all the cushions are done. So I guess the only thing really now left to do is figure out how I'm going to be installing our table. Went for a Lagoon table copy from eBay because the Lagoon table was a little bit out of our price range. So I paid $59.99 for the copy off of eBay and it's come, I put it together and to be honest, the quality of it is really good. I've now just got to figure out where I'm going to mount it in this area. Bearing in mind that we need to eat our dinner and obviously have the table to have as much functionality as possible. All right, so we've obviously got our table itself. That's been stained with the same stain as I did for our worktop. And this is the base plate that it comes with. It just nice and easy screws onto the uh, bottom of the table. We decided to centralize it because it's quite a small table and it just goes on with six screws. And then we've got the back mounting plate for behind whatever wood you're putting it on, the front mounting plate, and then this is the main leg which actually attaches onto the mounting plate. And then this then goes on like that and then the table attaches into one of those holes. And that's everything you get. And I was quite happy with the price because it was only 60 quid compared to whatever price the lagoon tables are at the moment but this is really well well built so let's have a look at where we're going to fit it Well, there we go, that's the table installed. 
Nice and easy job. Only took me an hour. I'm happy that I didn't justify spending the money on the lagoon table. And I just went with the cheap one instead. Uh, yeah. It's really good. The sofa cushions are arriving today, so... I'll either pick you up when we're putting them on, or I'll pick you up this evening when we're away. So as you can probably tell, it's been quite a few weeks since the last couple of clips. The hats come out and the weather has definitely got colder and we are venturing ever closer to our leaving date to head over on the Euro Tunnel into France to start our European road trip. And luckily, this van is very nearly completed. So you would have seen in the previous clip that the sofa cushion covers have arrived and we are so happy with them. Like I said previously, from the cushions I made, it was just a case of stretching them over the actual cushion itself. And doing so means that you don't see any of the awful edging that I managed to do with the Stanley blade. And yeah, it was just a super cheap and effective way of covering our sofa cushions and just tying the rest of the van to this sofa build. So since we managed to get the soft furnishings done on the sofa and the rest of it is all working fine, we decided to approach actually trimming all the unneat edges with some wood trim from b &Q. Now, seeing as we're in the later stages of our van build, we thought the majority of the cost with buying materials and all the fixings was largely behind us. That was until I went to b &Q and purchased a wood trim. That was a massive expense which I hadn't factored in because I just thought it was going to be the same price as going and buying any other wood. Oh boy, was I wrong. We ended up spending just over £100 on all the final wood trims that we needed to just make this van feel more like a finished product. So, seeing as all the wood trim on the sofa is done, I think I better show you how it was installed. And there we go, that's turned this sofa from the rough and ready finished product that it was into quite a nice piece of furniture now. And with the sofa cushions on and the covers on and everything else in place, we are so happy with the final result. Now the eagle eyed viewers among you might have realised that we no longer have a diesel heater vent coming out from underneath our kitchen. And there is quite a story behind why that's the case. So you'll have to stay tuned for next week's video where we dive into how we got scanned. But until then, I think that's where I'm gonna leave this video for today. As always, we really hope you did enjoy this episode of The Van Build. If you've got any questions or comments about anything leading up to today's video, including the sofa, how we built it, or how we did anything else in the rest of the van, then drop a comment down below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. If you liked the video, then please drop it a like. It helps out the channel a lot and it helps us continue to grow. And as of right now, we've just crossed over 600 subscribers. So thank you to all of you who have decided to stick around with us on this journey. If this is your first time to the channel, then please consider subscribing down below to see the rest of the build videos in the series and also to see our European road trip videos that are going to be coming very, very soon. This van build is very nearly done, but there are still a few videos to come. But until then, I'll catch you next time. <laughs>